What does it take to be great in God's kingdom? You're only going to live for 60, 70, 80, 90 years on this earth. The rest of your time is going to be spent in the kingdom of God. What's it going to take for you to be great in the kingdom of God? In Mark chapter 10, we have a story about Jesus and his disciples. Two of them, two of the leading disciples, James and John, came to him one day, and they had a request. They said, grant us that we may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, when you come to your glory. They felt that Jesus was going to go to Jerusalem at some point and destroy the power of the Romans, free all the Jews, and rule as king over Israel. That's what they viewed. Now, they didn't understand that that will happen one day. When he comes again, he is coming to destroy his enemies and rule and reign on the earth, a thousand-year reign, the millennial kingdom of Christ. But before that, the first time he came, he was coming to die, to die for our sins and rise again so we could enter the kingdom of God, we could spiritually experience it as the children of God. They didn't understand that. They had the world's view of greatness. What does it take to be great in God's kingdom? Well, they thought it had to do with power and prestige. We want to sit on your right hand. We want to sit on your left hand. Jesus later on gets the other disciples heard about this, and they got upset. So Jesus called them all together, and he said, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones exercise authority over them. The, the world's view of greatness is about prestige. It's about power. It's about rule. It's about rank. It's about title. It's about possessions. It's about position. It's about self. It's all about self. What are you going to... They go to Jesus and they say, I want to be great in your kingdom. I want a position at your right hand. It's about pride. It's about selfish ambition. Now, especially young men, I think, struggle with ambition because you, you, you want to be somebody. You want to accomplish something. It's, if, if you come from privilege, you want to earn your own rights of privilege. If you come from nothing, you want to prove that you deserve something. And so it's easy to get caught up in the world's view of greatness. The disciples all did, but we know elsewhere in Scripture that pride, selfishness, it always leads to dishonor. If you want to climb up, it, you end up falling down because of your pride and your selfishness. But Jesus presented a different view of what it took to be great in his kingdom. He said, it shall not be so among you. For whoever desires to become great among you, you shall become your servant. And whoever desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Previous in, in this section, he said, look, you want to you sit at my right hand? You don't even understand what I'm about to do. I'm going to drink a cup of suffering, of pain and persecution. And if you follow me, eventually you're going to experience pain and persecution too. You want to be great in God's kingdom? It's painful. You'll get persecuted. It's about service and sacrifice. You've got to become the servant of all. You've got to give your life a ransom for many. It's about living not for yourself, but for other people. It's about humility. This is the life Jesus chose, and he's the greatest in the kingdom. This is the life that God ultimately honors. Philippians chapter 2 says, You need to be like Jesus, who even though he was God, didn't hang on to the privileges of being God, but became a servant and obeyed God and served even to the point of death, death on the cross. And therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. You want to be great? Be like Jesus. Live for others. Live in humility. Sacrifice and serve. Be willing to endure pain and persecution. What are you going to do about your selfish ambition? What does it take to be great in God's kingdom? 
Surrender your selfish ambition to God. Adopt His mission, His ambition, and live a life of humility, serving other people.